Here to tell you everything you want to know about Pook products are Tony Pook and Kevin McCotter. Pook, Pook me, Pook, Pook, Pook me, Pook, Pook, Pook me, Pook, Pook me, Pook, Pook me. Have you copyrighted those lyrics? Absolutely. You just made that up, right? I just made that up. Uh, how do I know? Pook me. <laughs> What if I said to my wife, poop me, what would she say? Wear your hat? <laughs> this is a family show, right? Maybe. Yeah, it, it is. But not with Frank. I don't know that <laughs> Okay, first, let's destroy the alternate facts out there. How did this all start? Come on closer to the microphone. He's Tony Pook. He should tell the story of the Pook Took, right? Okay, go ahead. Well, it's a simple story, John, really. Uh, I was socializing in an apartment, a small little apartment. You know that time in your life when you finish college or university, but you don't really have a job and no one wants to hire you, so you're just kind of fumbling through life, not really doing anything productive? Mm -hmm. It was during that time, and there was some libations, and a sock ended up on my head at one point. And uh, I got a little bit of attention, and that kind of spawned the idea that it's possible to, to make socks wearable on your head. Really, that's it. Okay. Uh, but, okay. <laughs> when did you get the idea that you were really onto a big thing? Uh, I'll feel that one. Uh, so, from that night, Tony was with more of. I'm three years older than Tony. He grew up best buddies with my younger brother. Tony pitched all his friends. Hey, why doesn't somebody help me make these sock hats and we'll sell some and everyone just thought he was a bit of a goof. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> really? And uh, then we were just sitting, true story, uh, sitting in Bentley's in Stratford one night and he's like, Kevin, you've done some business stuff. Uh, can you help me? And I was like, all right. Because the first store he ever got into, after his mom taught him how to sew the sock hats, uh, was Family and Company in oh, yeah. Stratford. Yeah. And uh, I said, okay. And then we, we, I put in, I don't know, a couple thousand bucks to make <coughs> sock hats. And we did our first craft show out in Calgary. And it was this super vintage fancy craft show where people sell like jewelry for five hundred dollars a piece and stuff and we had shipped a garbage bag of sock hats is all we had and there were 400 sock hats and we thought that would last us for like a month and we literally sold out in the first day wow and they were so mad at us at the craft show the craft show owners they're Why? just like because we weren't able to stay there and sell anything. <laughs> and so we sold out on the first day and we just went, I think uh, sock hats might work. Got something here. Yeah. Okay, uh, what was the most di difficult thing in starting your business? Uh, working with Tony. <laughs> <laughs> you? I would say working with Kevin. Uh, <laughs> we are taller, polar, uh, Total polar opposites, yeah. you know, like I enjoy the fruits of life and I like colors and mountains and music and love and I cherish things and Kevin just, he just doesn't like anything. He doesn't like anything at all. You've got There's not a single thing that he likes. So it's hard to get along with someone like that. I'm really just curious, are there anybody, is there anybody out there was there during the original night when this thing happened? It, you don't seem to have many friends. This, her husband. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, very Greg good. Robson was there. Okay. He's a local. What, what's the hardest thing you face now in your business? Uh, just deciding how big to get or how to get big. Mm -hmm. I or think bigger. The, cha the challenge is to keep coming up with new things, right? Um, eventually, everyone you know will have a sock hat. And then what's next, right? Yeah. So you always have to be on top of that and making new stuff and trying to think of something else that'll work. And so that's always a challenge. Okay, so you were on Dragon's Den. Tell us about that. Uh, One thing about Dragon's Den that people should know is, like, basically none of those deals really even happen. It's really? all TV. Everyone's lying. It's all lies. <laughs> the whole thing is a lie. Don't believe it. They cut it. They edit it. And they, oh, I remember watching it, and I'm like, I didn't make that face after he said that. I know I didn't make that face. 
And so, and, and they're very good, they're very friendly, and they're asking about your family, and everyone's happy and laughing, and all of a sudden you watch the episode, and they're angry at you, and they're calling you crazy, and Kevin's, Kevin's crying at one point. <laughs> so it's sort of like fake news. It's fake news. Fake news. Yeah. Okay. So we, we got a deal with, with, on the one time we were on there, and uh, it, uh, it didn't pan out, just like every other deal doesn't pan out. Very few of them do. But it's yeah. good television. Yeah, but you got a good exposure of them, right? Great, yeah, that was great exposure. It was yeah. Really big for us, actually. How yeah. are you doing this, pal? <laughs> okay, yeah, so you started with the original product. How did you come up with the other ones? Because some are pretty crazy. Have you met Tony Pook? <laughs> uh, actually, this is the first time I've met him. I, I would say, the like, we have good buddies who are always on the road with us doing these, these we call them Pook Tube Tours. Um, and uh, during the booth sales, you're, you're logging hours and hours in a booth, and that's when you start thinking of new products and people are asking you why don't you make that and you're like well i don't know and then you make that you know mm -hmm. so you're always getting people requesting stuff and so that's part of it for sure so how, so uh, how far can it go are you just finding out as you go along space space yeah we're looking into launching a sock hat you think uh, into uh, outer space canadian astronaut meant, you know hackfield took up the what the guitar right and i think like that maybe one of the athlete one of the uh, space guys can go up with a poop tube well, one of my Good friends uh, is Elon Musk, and we're just, oh. and we're talking about things. Uh, so. Are you? Is this true? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's all lies. Because <laughs> I was hoping to maybe get Ellen here, you know. Uh, <laughs> now, here's a question: Because I used to work in sport in Canada, and should we be expect to see our athletes wearing boot gear at the next uh, Winter Olympic Games? Uh, I would say no, um, but we we got one of our first big breaks from a, just this really nice woman we met. We meet so many people doing like these shows. We met an amazing woman that worked for HBC, and she's like, why don't you come in and talk to us and stuff, and we thought all of a sudden we were going to be making Olympic gear, and Prince Harry was going to wear it at his wedding. Uh, but we ended up getting like an HBC deal where they did put us in a bunch of their stores and uh, so we were in HBC for a while but you're competing against like Nike and Roots and all that sort of jazz mm -hmm. so uh, but we have had a lot of good breaks and met a lot of good people that have helped us now, now tell me about some of the, the products you make you make the poop do what else well Tony I would suggest you stand up and uh, show one of our newest is, is, there, is there anything under there? this by the way no John that's an after hours show uh, but this is our reversible faux fur lingerie robe bath coat. I think John was going, ooh, ah. It's almost like P. Diddy and Hugh Hefner had a baby. Okay, wonderful. And <laughs> hey, what else do you make? Well, you know, an assortment of products, John. You know, we from sock mittens and... Um, you know, uh, slippers with rubber grip on the bottom, uh, so people won't slip and slide if they have a few cocktails at night. Mm -hmm. We have uh, onesies with fully functional butt flaps. A onesie without a fully functional butt flap is a pointless piece of fabric. Okay. So throw in the garbage. You need a fully functional butt flap. Those are big. Uh, baby sock hats and dog jackets and uh, what else? And we, we have got? dog booties. I think I saw a dog booty there. Yeah, nice booty actually. Those actually weren't dog booties. They were baby mitts, but I asked the woman to put them on the dog. People come up to us and they go, do you have any dog stuff? And we're like, yeah, just shove these on your dog's feet. Here we go. Maybe the microphone is a windsock. That's what we call uh, pookie dookie. Uh, but yeah, perfect for dog's feet. Maybe you can make a dog waist picker up called a Pookie Poopy. I already thought of that. <laughs> How come he gets more laughter than I do? I don't understand. Okay, well, we want to put something on St. Mary's Life for people in St. Mary's to come up with some new ideas. Here we go. I thought of a, for Australia, uh, a boomerang holder. I thought that would be good. Don't want to deal with the time difference and operating out over there. Okay. Adam Wheel came up with a backpack that turns into a sleeping bag. 
Uh, I totally suggest Adam Wheel starts up a company that uh, builds backpacks that turns into what? A sleeping wheel? A sleeping bag, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Courtney Luke suggested Pook Christmas stockings and blankets. Courtney is right on the mark there. We actually have a new Pook blanket coming out soon. Faux fur. And no one's ever done plaid faux fur before. We're really excited about it. We were actually featured on Fabric Quarterly. Do you subscribe to that magazine? Uh, can't say I do. It doesn't exist. Oh, okay. But if it did, we would be featured on it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Anna, uh, Arianna Polk, I think that's B-O-C-H, would like a plaid yoga mat bag. Arianna? Yeah. Now, you've been featured in yoga magazine here. Too, right? Well, I'm a yoga instructor. Oh, okay. Uh, I invented the dog down move. Okay. Also, we have yoga pants now. I'm not joking. Uh, they're sensational. They have a disintegrating plaid uh, print and multiple pockets. And uh, they're great for working out. Kevin's addicted to working out. I'm addicted to working out now. It's, uh, it's healthy and they're sensational. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, we have those. Okay, great. Now, <laughs> you're men about town. You're from St. Mary's first, right? You grew up here. Uh, I grew up about uh, 200 feet up the hill, and I used to swim where everyone's sitting right now. Uh, we're, we've gone metric in this show. Metric. We've gone metric in this show. Did I use You said some... 200 feet. Oh, sorry. Uh, how many meters? Uh, like one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, That's so and where, where did you grow up? I went to St. Mike's. I, I grew up uh, something like three meters past Kevin's place. <laughs> And when did you meet him? Uh, we met, I don't know, I can't even remember. We, I, I, I used to hang out here with his younger brother. Was, I went to school with him, so the McCotters and the Pooks have always been family friends, so basically our, our whole life. Okay, wonderful. And you're still friends? Well, no, no, we never became friends. We, oh. we actually kind of don't like each other at all. Okay. And that's one of the beauties of our relationship. Now, one of you lives in New York, right? Yeah, I live in New York now. And where do you live? Uh, Toronto. Toronto. But you come back, you came back exclusively for the front porch show, didn't you? Yes. How would you turn down the front porch show? I, I don't know. Uh, no, I'm in, uh, I live in Toronto, but I come back. Family's still here, and uh, I love golfing at River Valley Golf Club. River Valley yeah. Golf Club! Yeah. What have you learned about in life, the philosophical? We're, we're going to get philosophical here, okay? You're into that? You can do this? Yeah. Okay. What have you learned about life in all this? Just have fun. <laughs> wow, that's so that's insightful. Deep. Yes. Okay, sera, sera. Uh, yeah, pretty much. You know, on a serious note, one thing that I've learned is uh, to hang out with people you don't like and, um, you know, just to go for it. So if you have an idea and uh, it, like time is so finite and life is short and if you have an idea, just, just, just go for it and rip it. Even if it's something as ridiculous as selling socks on your head. Time is actually infinite. All right, well, it's finite for a human being. So <laughs> what I'm saying is, is just, just, just rip it, just go for it. Just sort of like a front porch show. Exactly, yeah. 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 You just go for it. There's no point in holding back on it, right? Yeah. See what happens. Lanny, good example. We grew up with Lanny, and he went and started his flower shop. He probably didn't know what was going to happen, and he's been great success. Yeah. Can you follow your dream? Uh, Tony will probably tell you a story about uh, his dream. Actually, that's nice that you brought that up, following your dream. I remember when I was a little boy at Holy Name of Mary, Mrs. Rupel was teaching me then. And uh, she, Mrs. Rupel told us to write down what we wanted to be when we grew up. And so, of course, the children wrote down what they wanted to be, and um, I had forgotten about this. And then my mother had been going through my memoirs box last month, and she found that piece of paper. And it said, sock hat salesman. So, ever since I was a little boy, I knew I wanted to be a sock hat salesman before I even knew what a sock hat was. So, it's an example. If you follow your heart and never give up, you can accomplish anything. Never give up. Very good. Okay. Uh... Thank you. <laughs> we, we've really enjoyed having you in the show. Uh, you're always welcome here, and you, and you may even do, by the way, our ads are free, so you've got, we're going to give you a free ad ne on next year's show. Uh, it costs nothing, and come on the show again. When, next time you're in town, we'd love to have you, okay?
Awesome. This is amazing to see in St. Mary's, and I think it's just a great event for the town. So good for you guys, everyone. Everyone that does all this stuff. Thanks for having us.